OK, let's go over uh, sections 20.1 to 20.3 from Knight. This is chapter 20 on traveling waves. And it has to do with uh, particles in a medium which oscillate back and forth and then energy travels along through that medium. So this is a good time to go back to chapter 14 and review oscillations and simple harmonic motion because a lot of the equations from chapter 14 come back in chapter 20. So if you have maybe a pebble dropping into uh, some water, it sets up oscillations and these oscillations can then travel along, ripples on a pond. So a traveling wave is a disturbance which travels along with a well-defined speed. It always requires a medium, in this case the water, uh, which is the substance through which the wave travels. And keep in mind that the wave propagates, but the particles of the medium don't. The particles of the medium just oscillate back and forth as the wave itself passes through the medium. I sometimes like to think of wheat uh, in a field of wheat you can see sometimes waves going across the field, but certainly it's not the wheat that's actually moving along on the field. It's just staying in place. So there's two kinds of waves, a transverse wave and a, a longitudinal wave. A transverse wave is one in which the uh, disturbance or the oscillations go perpendicular to the direction in which the wave travels. So if you have a string and you oscillate it up and down, the wave in the string moves from left to right. A longitudinal wave is one in which the oscillations are parallel to the direction in which the wave travels. So here you see a whole bunch of air molecules in a column of air, and there's a wall on the left here oscillating left to right. What that does is it sets up re regions of compression as it moves to the right, and rarefaction as it moves to the left, and these regions move along. So if you look at any air particle, it's oscillating left to right, while the wave itself, these uh, compression regions, move from left to right. If you have a wave on a string, or a, a stretched uh, spring that has some tension, then you can find the speed of the wave is the square root of the tension divided by mu, where mu is the string's mass-to-length ratio also called the linear density. The equation for mu is the mass of the string divided by the length, or the mass of some part of the string divided by that, the length of that part. So the units are kilograms per meter. And this makes sense, right? If you increase the tension of a string, then waves move faster along the string. If you keep the tension fixed and increase the mass density of the string, then waves travel more slowly along that string. So how do we graph a traveling wave? So if a wave's traveling along in one dimension, the x dimension, you've got the position and the time, and also the displacement of, of the wave itself, this disturbance, maybe delta y if you're looking at a wave on a string. So that's three variables, and I guess you'd have to make a graph in 3D in, real, in order to really show it. But it's hard to plot things in 3D. So normally what we do in this course is we either plot the disturbance versus x, and that's called a, a snapshot graph, or we just plot the disturbance versus time at a particular uh, uh, value of x. So a snapshot graph is when you pick a particular time, maybe when the, I guess, the camera goes off and, and plot what what the wave is versus x. So this is literally like a picture of the wave at this instant. Okay, so here's a wave traveling from left to right. The leading edge is steep, the trailing edge is a little bit um, less steep, and this is what a snapshot graph looks like. So now think of if you were to take snapshots at, at different times, as time went uh, t1 plus delta t is t2, and then keep on going to different delta t's, you will see this same shape moving from left to right. So these are like successive frames in a movie. And this wave pulse moves the same distance delta x during every time interval delta t. So you actually say that this, uh, this wave is moving at some constant speed delta x divided by delta t. So if you look at a plot of 
this delta y versus time now, you will see that first it goes uh, for lower times, it goes up the, the, the leading edge, and then as time gets greater and greater, it goes down the trailing edge. And so this is what a history graph looks like. The leading edge happens at small values of time, and then as time increases, you go down the trailing edge. And this is called a history graph. It tells the history of a particular point in the medium as time goes from earlier times to later times. And you might notice that the shape of this, uh, this pulse is reversed left to, to right compared to the snapshot graph. If you have a longitudinal wave, you can make a plot of delta x versus x, where delta x is the position of every little particle relative to its equilibrium position. So at, I guess this plot here is for t equals 0. At t equals 0, at the origin, particles are sitting at their equilibrium position. But at 2 centimeters, they're displaced to the right here, 1 centimeter away from their equilibrium. Whereas over here at 6 centimeters, they're displaced uh, 1 centimeter to the left of their equilibrium, and so on. So you'll see this compression region right around, right around here, and then as time goes on, it moves towards the right. Here's just a photograph of the wave going around in a sports stadium. You see people standing up and then sitting down. That's your uh, displacement or your disturbance from equilibrium. And we can actually mathematically model maybe them standing up and sitting down as a function of x going along where the wave goes and time uh, as, as the wave passes by. So this is a good, another good example of how the particles don't move along with the wave. They just oscillate in place. A sinusoidal wave is when you have a source that's generating simple harmonic motion, and that's sending waves that move along. So here it is graphed in three dimensions, x and t, and there's a displacement uh, vertically. But if you look at a history graph, it looks just like the history graph or the uh, position versus time graph of a simple harmonic oscillator. It's a sine wave. It has some amplitude a and some period t where the frequency of the oscillation is defined as 1 over the period t. And the t is just, the, I guess, the time between two successive uh, crests in this graph. If you look at a snapshot graph, it looks just the same, where here, except here you're plotting disturbance versus x. Okay, so this is a snapshot of what this wave would look like if it's moving along from left to right. You'll see crests, and troughs, and the distance between any two equal positions on this wave is called the wavelength, or distance between crests, and that's lambda. So here is a snapshot graph at time equals zero, and a snapshot graph a little time later. A quarter of a period later, it has moved from left to right, and it just keeps moving along without changing its shape. Here's three quarters of a period. As you go to an entire period, this crest has moved a distance of one wavelength. So the distance spanned by one cycle of emotion is called a wavelength, measured in meters. And the time it takes uh, for a sinusoidal wave to travel that distance is, is one period. So the wave speed is lambda divided by t. Or in terms of the frequency, since frequency is 1 over t, you can say the wave speed is lambda times f. So I want to define omega and k. Omega is called the angular frequency of a wave, and k is called the wave number of a wave. And angular frequency is 2 pi times f, or 2 pi over t, and this wave number is 2 pi divided by lambda. If you define those numbers, those constants, you can now set up this nice looking equation for the displacement of a sinusoidal wave. It's the amplitude times the sine of kx minus omega t plus some phase constant, which tells you something about how the wave starts. So this, uh, this wave speed is lambda times f, or lambda over t. It's also omega divided by k. And by the way, the units of omega are radians per second, and the units of wave number k are radians per meter. So here's a history graph at some position x1 of a sinusoidal wave. 
and if uh, if x is fixed there, then this d is showing d of x1 comma t. So as t increases, you get this sine wave. The snapshot graph would be at some t1, let x increase. And again, you see this uh, the same sinusoidal shape. And this one repeats every lambda meters. This one repeats every capital T seconds. So here's a uh, wave on a string and a snapshot showing what its position is at this time. Now I want you to think about the velocity of each particle up or down as the wave passes by. This is like simple harmonic motion. So at the top of the simple harmonic motion, the particle has stopped instantaneously. Uh, as it's getting closer, I guess as the wave moves uh, from uh, left to right, then this particle will go down and it'll be moving uh, fast down. It's actually the greatest speeds are when these particles p pass their equilibrium position. So these velocities of particles on the string are in the y direction. And the way to find it is to just take the time derivative of this y position. So the y position was given by sine kx minus omega t. The velocity is given by negative omega times a the amplitude times the cosine of that same function.